Good morning and welcome to United in Christ Luther Church's digital web space. Thank you for being here with us on this second Sunday of Advent. As we continue in this season of preparation and waiting, here we are met by God's surprising announcements in our midst. Thank you. Thank you for being here to be a part of worship with us this morning. Uh, we're going to be getting started in just a few minutes, but we've got a spot picked out for you with Kathy up front here this morning. Uh, we look forward to joining with you together in worship today. Thanks for being here this morning. United in Christ Lutheran Church. We're so glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> um, a few announcements before we get started this morning. Youth group is meeting this afternoon at 1 p.m. at Milton Lutheran Church at 100 Mahoning Street. So we're hoping, hopeful to see all of our youth group and confirmands there. Um, this afternoon, too, we also have our Sharing Our Tables community meal at 1125 Mahoning Street. Uh, so if you've signed up to volunteer for that, Looking forward to also seeing you there. <laughs> it's a busy day for us. Um, looking ahead into this next week, on Tuesday, we have our next meeting of Theology on Tap. We are meeting at Rusty Rail uh, at 6 p.m. to just gather together, and then at 6.30, discussion will start. Uh, look, oh, actually, looking today, I forgot, and one other thing for today. Um, our social ministry group is meeting at in the fellowship hall about 20 minutes or so after worship. Uh, so if you're there, great. You have a great looking agenda looking ahead of you. <laughs> um, our elder share boxes are in, so if you are one of the folks who helped deliver those, they are ready to be picked up or and delivered. Uh, quite a few thank yous. Uh, thank you to those who helped package the, um, the Christmas gift bags for those at Country Comfort and for the Senior Express. Uh, thank you for those who stuck around last week to help decorate the sanctuary. Looks pretty good. <laughs> and um, a giant thank you to Teresa Furman for making these beautiful pyramids and this lovely flower display that we are just so thankful for as it brightens up our sanctuary. And uh, just another thank you for all of those who donated this past Tuesday for Giving Tuesday for kicking off our capital campaign as we are looking to, towards these property projects. Just a giant thank you for that. We're so grateful for uh, your continued partnership as we prepare to look ahead for these projects for our building. Um, final announcement. Any other announcements before I get to my final announcement? Yes, Sherry. Along with the um, Senior Express Elder Share boxes, if you're picking up your boxes, don't forget to pick up a Christmas card for each recipient um, as they are by the signing sheet, and then a gift bag, which are in the social hall for each recipient. So each recipient gets a box, a Christmas card, Yes, yeah, so if you are delivering for the Elder Share program, it is, there's a Christmas card by the sign-up sheet, yeah. sign sheet, and then there's also the uh, Christmas gift bags that are in the fellowship hall. Yes, Terry. Yes. Yes, yes, if you um, want to help sponsor just someone who, whose family is no longer able to participate in this holiday season with them, please contact Donna. That would be great. Um, and just for my final announcement, as we're looking ahead to Christmas, 
we're doing a pre-recorded Christmas worship service. And so we're asking that you guys stick around after worship to sing a Christmas carol. So maybe just give you a little taste of what's to come. So if you guys could just stick around, we'll do a quick recording. It'll maybe take two tries. Maybe one. So we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Marilyn says she's only doing it once. <laughs> so. Uh, well, that is all I have for this morning. We're so glad you're here. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Um, just as we gather together, uh, Mary is going to play a beautiful prelude. So just as we sit here, just um, prepare for worship as we listen to the prelude. Thank you. rise and body your own spirit. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed, Blessed be God's, God's name, name forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess, we confess that, that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the spirit, you are joined to this wonder. 
You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the, in the way of the Lord. Amen. We now sing our opening hymn, number 239, Hark the Glad Sound, found on page 4 of the bulletin. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and peace through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. Amen please be seated our first reading today is from Genesis thus God said to Abraham as for Sarai your wife you shall not call her name Sarai, for Sarah is now her name. I will bless her, and indeed of her I will give you a son, and I will bless her, and she will become nations. 
rulers of people shall come into being from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to one a hundred years old? And can Sarah, ninety years old, give birth? Then Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael could live in your sight, God said, Nevertheless, your wife, Sarah, shall give birth to a son for you, and you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him, an everlasting covenant for his offspring after him. Now as for Ishmael, I have heard you, and I will bless him and make him fruitful, and I will make him exceedingly, exceedingly numerous, and he shall be the father of twelve chieftains, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall give birth to for you at this season next year. And when God had finished speaking with him, God ascended from Abraham. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. Would you please rise in spirit or in body? And let us pray. Praise to you, O God, who holds our joy and sorrow. You bring water to parched ground and life out of death. Bless us as this light grows and send sorrows sighing to flee away. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. Transform the lives of all who suffer with your wonders near at hand. Amen. Light two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. Each of his flock like a shepherd. This is the Holy Gospel according to Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Mary set out in those days and went to the hill country with haste to a Judean town. And there she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Now, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. I mean, from where does this visit come to me? That, that the mother of my sovereign comes to me. Look! As soon as I heard the sound of your greeting in my ear, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Now, blessed is she who believed there would be a fulfillment of those things spoken to her by the Holy One. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. But at this time, I'd like to invite Ford and the young folks who are present in worship this morning for a special time together up front. Come on up, gang. I'm so glad to see you guys. Thank you for being here this morning. I'm so glad you guys are here. It's excellent. Oh, yes, good. Yes. Take up. Yeah, we've got to sit right here in the pond, right? The pond in the middle of the playground. Good morning. It does, that frog does look like he's got some uh, issues going on there with that. He's fighting that leaf and kind of losing, it looks like, right? Oh, oh, yeah, no, I know. I hear you, my guy, right? Thank you for being here this morning, everybody. I am so glad that you are here with us in worship today. I, I have a question for you guys. What is, what's the best news you've ever gotten? What's the best news you've ever gotten? Has anyone ever told you something really exciting? What's the best news you've ever gotten? Can you think? Yeah, Emmy. When your mom and dad finally told you that you were going to Disney. That's good news. And Oh, that you were going to the beach. Less good news, but still good news, right? Yeah. Coda, what's some good news you've gotten? Uh, two. Um, the first time I got my very first pack of Pokemon cards. Yep, Pokemon cards. We are in the genre today. Come on. Gabby still watched the video. Gabby still watched the video. Gabby still watched the video. 
And the, for, oh, you went to Sci-Fi Con. That's good news, isn't it? Right? Yes, Addie, what's your good news? Yeah, I think that's really good news that sometimes my mom gives me medicine and juice to make me feel better. That's really good news, Addie. Thank you for sharing that. What other good news? Did you guys have some other good news? Scarlett, what's your good news? Oh, is your hand not up or are you just scratching your head? Yeah, I've been there, done that. Oh, you're trying to think of your good news. I'll get back to you. Okay, thank you. I can get back to you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that release. See, sometimes we get these really good newses in our life. Sometimes, sometimes we find out that we got to go to school with a teacher that we really like. Sometimes we get to find out that we're going to Disney World. Sometimes we find out that we're going to feel a little bit better. And sometimes, I don't know about you, but you went to Disney World. Yeah. When you f get good news, what do you do with your good news? Who do you tell? You tell your parents, you tell your friends, you tell your friends and your family. Sometimes we share the good news. Yeah, Veda? You can tell your teacher your good news, right? Sometimes it's good to share the good news with people around us. I'll tell you what, today, today in our story, we hear a lot about some good news. Today we're, we're following the story from our friend named Mary. Can you say Mary? Mary. And we heard a very important story about Mary last week. We found out that Mary is going to have a baby. And that baby is going to be God entering into this world to show all of the people that he meets about God's love. And that baby's name, do you know that baby's name? Who's the one we celebrate on Christmas? Jesus! Jesus! Yes! It's good news and we have to shout it, right? We learned that Mary's going to have baby Jesus. And today, do you know what she do, does in our story today? She starts to tell the people around her about that good news. Mary goes to visit her friend and relative, Elizabeth. Can you say Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Yeah, and Mary goes and shares with Elizabeth this good news. See, this story reminds us that when good news happens, that's when God shows up. And when we share it, we learn that that's us sharing God's love with the people around us. Yeah, it's a builder, right? That's good news. So I tell you what, guys. The next time you have some good news or you get to share it with some people, can you remember? It is a puppy, and that's also good news. Can you remember? Can you remember how much God loves each and every one of you and how good that news is? And how God wants you to share that news with the people around us. Can you remember that, guys? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to color in just a minute. But there's a couple things we should do before we head back to our seats. What do you think they are? Pray and get candy and dip our hands in the water to remember that good news and get some papers. Yeah, I think that accounts for everything. Yeah, just about everything at this point. So let's go ahead. Let's pray first. So let's fold our hands and let's bow our heads because that helps us concentrate when we pray. Dear God, we give you so much thanks for all of the good news you give us in our lives. The news about your love and the news about the people you place around us. But most especially, God, we thank you for sending to us your son, Jesus, so that no matter where we are or who we are with, we know you love us always and no matter what. God, help us to share that love with as many people as we can and in as many ways as we can. For we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Excellent. You found that book. Jordy got this book. Johnny's got that puzzle. We are in good shape this morning. We can go ahead and grab a lollipop and some coloring sheets and either head back to our seats or set up here in the parade ground, whatever you'd like. Yeah. Yeah, Wade. I watched the star today. Did you watch the star this morning? That's very cool. Was it good? Yeah. How many times have you seen that now? Like three times. It's good. It's a good story. Thanks for sharing that, Wade. Thank you. You want to take one of those puzzles back to your seat with you, Johnny? I can open your candy cane for you. Absolutely. That is uh, other duties as assigned, Vicar Katie. Yes. You got that one too? I think that's open just enough for you to take it back to your seat there, Addie. You're going to take that back? That one's for your mom. There you go, Addie. Yes, she loves Oh, they're going to share them. Good deal. Good deal. 
I hope I opened the right side for you. Yeah, okay, good enough. We're, we're in business. That'll do. She could chew through the plastic. Yeah, it'll get you there eventually. Excellent. Thank you guys for being here today. And you guys can thank Miss Kim for the candy canes. She brought those in special for us. Thanks, Miss Kim. They're a great treat. I love it when we have our hands this full on a Sunday morning. We should start giving them backpacks to take this all back to their <laughs> seats with them. <laughs> it's going to be the next step. Excellent. Thank you for being here, guys. This is great. All right. Sometimes my mommy gives me medicine and juice to make me feel better. That's good news. That's good news. It doesn't get much better than that, right? Uh, all right, so the call comes in, or, or you get the email, or you get called into the office. Congratulations! <laughs> You've got the job. You've been, you've been accepted to the school of your dreams. It, your lab work has come back and it's negative. You've been promoted. Or you got a raise. Huh? You're on full scholarship. It's a boy. It's a girl. <laughs> Whatever it is, the message is that it's good news. In fact, it's great news. And now, now you can feel the excitement starting to stir. The anticipation is welling up. The joy is about to overload. Nope, not the stool right now. That's for later. Thank you very much. <laughs> I think your mom's looking for you, though. <laughs> Whatever the good news is, it's starting to well up. It's filling up. So here's my question for you. In the wake of that good news, who do you call? Who do you make the first call to? You pick up the phone, you start going through the address book. Maybe you still have their number memorized if you were born in a different generation on how phones work. <laughs> Regardless, who's the call going out to? For me, obviously, the first call is to my wife. I'm going to call Kelsey, of course, right? Mostly because these days, when such big proclamations come through, uh, they generally have ramifications for her life as well. As an example, uh, six years ago, getting a call from one Bishop Collins at the time telling me that I would soon be making my way to the Upper Susquehanna Synod. That's big news, gang! <laughs> And I had to share with my wife that we'd be uprooting everything and heading towards the middle central parts of Pennsylvania. Thank you very much for taking us on. <laughs> so those things have ramifications for her too. And she's the one who I can share in that excitement with. She has a way of rallying with me, of, of being caught up in that moment. But I also always tend to make a second call too. The second call that I send is always to my mom. <laughs> And my mom, likewise, will share in the excitement with me, but my mom has a real gift for following up the excitement with some really, some really particular questions. My mom has a way of, of doing the follow-up work, of, of asking the more pragmatic details. Oh, Upper Susquehanna is sitted. So will that mean you'll be living in the same town as your grandparents? Ooh, hadn't thought of that yet, huh? Oh, Upper Susquehanna is So will that mean you'll have to find a new apartment? Oh, I guess it will. Upper Susquehanna Synod, so does that mean we're going to all have to help you move to get up there? <laughs> yes, details, right? My mom has a way of echoing back the good news to me, but, but while also helping me look forward, too. She, she helps me sort things out by sharing the news together. That call is a different way of framing the good news, and, and it's those calls that start to make it real. It's one thing to know what's about to take place. It's another thing to have to start planning, to have to think ahead. But it only comes by way of sharing that news in the first place. It has to become concrete then in the sharing with one another. Because sometimes, let's be honest, sometimes the news genuinely seems too good to be true. Have you ever had that sensation before? 
Have you ever been told something or, or heard an announcement or been made a promise that just seems so good that it's almost unbelievable? And those are the sorts of proclamations that can leave us in a sort of uh, disbelieving limbo until we can finally start to sound it out with others, like picking up the phone to call Kelsey or to call my mom and to now then have it made real for us. I mean, that, that kind of disbelieving stupor, that, that certainly seems to be the case for Abraham and Sarah in our reading from Genesis this morning. Here, in this text, we arrive at this, this pivotal moment in this couple's lives, as their very identities are being changed beneath the good news announced to them from God. Did you catch it? As we witness Sarai, Receiving a change of name to Sarah, we recall that that Abraham, too, has had a new moniker given to him, forged from his previous identity as Abram. And in uh, in this case, the cause for such transition wasn't something lost. Instead, it's reminded. Here, Here, God once more offers this couple the good news. The proclamation, the promise that becomes the grounding of their name changes. Taking note of Sarah, God says, I will bless her. And indeed, I will give you a son of her. And I will bless her and she will become nations. Rulers of people shall come into being from her. Here, here God is declaring to this aging couple who are well beyond child rearing years, mind you. A promise of good news, of hope in the generations that will yet come from them. But here's the kicker. This isn't the first time that God has made this announcement to this couple. This isn't even the second time that God has told them this news. When we encounter this story in Genesis this morning, this is now the third time that God has had to remind Abraham and Sarah about what God is working in them and through them. The promise that they will bear a child who will give rise to a multitude of generations as numerous as the stars is not new, but it is unbelievable to them. They simply can't imagine its reality, especially given their century-old bodies. It's a seeming dubious approach that, that ultimately leads Abram and Sarah, Abram and Sarai, to try to force the matter and take the issue into their own hands. And in the horrific abuse that precedes this text, Sarai commands her slave Hagar to lie with Abram in an attempt to get the promise of a child underway. In robbing Hagar of her agency, in the violence that's committed to her, Abram and Sarai betray the doubt that they have about God's promises being made to them. And yet, and yet, even out of such atrocity, in this parsing out of this sounding out in the call of the promise here this morning, God makes clear that God's promise is large enough, it is grand enough to even account for Ishmael, the child born out of this tragedy. Here, in reinforcing the details of this unbelievable promise, in in talking it through and in sounding it out, God makes clear that this promise is even better news for God's people than the couple even could have initially conceived for themselves. Because God's promises can handle even this. While it led the couple to enact some horrific ramifications for Hagar, their incredulity at God's promise does, does frankly seem rather understandable. I mean, I mean, how often is it in Scripture that God or, or a holy messenger comes sweeping into a narrative to bring a bold declaration that seems utterly impossible and then dips out of the scene without much more explanation than that? Huh? 
mean, we just saw it again on display last week. Rejoice, favored one, Gabriel exclaimed to Mary. The Most High God is with you. I mean, despite Mary's troubled pondering over this audacious greeting, can you ask me after we're done? Yeah. You, oh, no, we've got to get Jesus later. That's the big news that we're trying to build up here for. I promise he's coming. <laughs> despite Mary's troubled pondering, of this greeting from last week, that the Most High God is with her. Despite still reeling from this new name offered her as being favored by God, even despite her perfectly ordinary position, despite all of that, Gabriel bullied right on through with an even more bombastic claim. You found favor with God, and now... Now you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Sovereign God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. I mean, come on. Talk about an unexpected announcement. Think about it. Being invited into the very process of God's entrance into this world being identified as the one through whom your people's long-awaited Savior would arrive. This is course-changing. It's it's life-shattering. It's earth-breaking news. So who are you going to call? Who would you call to tell about receiving such an announcement as this? Who would you turn to to share in this divine proclamation? Who would, you, who would be the one you tell about what God is doing? Who would be the one you'd let know that you had just been visited by an angel? Who would be the person you would call with the news of a sudden and unexpected pregnancy now taking place in your life? And what's handed to Mary is a tremendous amount of news to handle on her own. Which is maybe why, then, like we who reach for the phone to share the word, Mary today sets out with haste to greet Elizabeth and to share in the news that has taken place. Perhaps she goes to Elizabeth to to parse through the details of the promise, just as Abraham and God sat down to do in our reading from Genesis. Perhaps Mary goes to Elizabeth to make the reality of the proclamation sink in by sharing it, like when I call my wife or I call my mom. Perhaps Mary is simply looking for a confirmation of this holy proclamation. Maybe Mary just needs a safe space to ask, did that just happen? (laughs) I mean, whatever it is, whatever led her to go seek the company of Elizabeth, what Mary finds there this morning is nothing short of a divine affirmation of all that has been told to her. No sooner does Mary come through the door than Elizabeth boldly exclaims, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Immediately, Elizabeth reiterates and reaffirms that which Gabriel told Mary last week, that she has found favor. She has been named as blessed. This call to Elizabeth from the beginning sounds out the truth that has been proclaimed to Mary. But in turn, now a a new wonder enters into the scene. In this recognition at hand, in the announcement at Mary's uh, Mary's visit, now Elizabeth, too, finds herself reeling with this news. As the nascent voice in the wilderness within her stirs, as John the Baptist stirs within to start pointing the way to the Christ now growing in their midst, Elizabeth joins in the perplexity at hand. From where does this visit come to me, she asks. That the mother of my sovereign comes to me. Elizabeth, too, is incredulous at the possibility of this divine arrival drawing near. 
as the Mary before her carries the Sovereign Almighty in the safekeeping of her own womb, Elizabeth is left in dumbfounded wonder. Can you blame her? I mean, can you imagine? The scene itself, frankly, is almost comical, especially given the whiplash of juxtaposition from last week. I mean, we go from the grandeur of the holy announcement on the lips of Gabriel last Sunday to this most unlikely of scenes, of the well-past child-rearing years, yet nevertheless very pregnant with a kicking baby Elizabeth, to the still unwed and having never yet known a man, Mary, sitting together, both with new life of a divine spark within each of them. And yet, Yet between these two pregnant women who should not be pregnant, there's a shared pregnancy that belongs to the expectant joy taking place between them. The joy that they find in one another. Because the news they've been given is unbelievable. Their reality is unthinkable. The whole situation is comical. And so they have to share it. To share in it as the sacred and the holy accomplishment that it is. Maybe, maybe that's the exact reminder we need in this season of Advent. In the midst of this narrative of God's very arrival on earth, this story reminds us who hear it now that there is indeed plenty of room for confusion. There is more than enough space for disbelief, for incredulity. There is a spot for laughable wonder, even in the midst of this arrival. As Mary and Elizabeth share in holy intimacy the truth that will soon be claimed by heralding angels on high out in the fields. For now, for now God's presence is held instead in the holy intimacy between two women still laughing over their situation at hand. <laughs> so who are you going to call? Who are you going to share it with? Because in case the message wasn't clear, the truth that was held for these two women is the same truth that is being born for you. You might laugh at it like Abraham and Sarah. You, you might need to go running for confirmation like Mary. You might feel walloped by incredulous joy like Elizabeth. But it does not change the fact that here you are met by this same arrival. Here, God's divine presence continues to show up for you in the most outlandish of moments, among the most unlikely of people. And it might all sound too good to be true. But it is certain. Here you are being named as beloved and as favored by God. You, just as you are, are found worthy of God's love breaking into this world. I get it. It makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> So you better go call someone about it. Go and share this incredulous good news. Let it take root in your gatherings and in your laughter. May the sacred find space between you. May you see God showing up in your shared moments in the weeks ahead. May they be the grounding for what you share in this life-changing news. And may you share that news with a world craving for its certainty. And like Mary and Elizabeth drawing clothes, may you share in that holy intimacy and find God's arrival taking root. Go. Make the call. Amen. I invite you to rise and join in spirit or in body and join together in singing our hymn of the day, number 250, Blessed Be the God of Israel, found on page 8 of your bulletins.
Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God, you renew the church in every age. We give thanks for him, writers and theologians. Inspire teachers, writers, and musicians to delight and instruct your people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You give us a vision of creation in harmony when hurting and destruction will be no more. Teach us to be stewards of the earth and companions to its creatures. Restore to balance and wholeness what human greed has harmed. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You defend the cause of all who are poor and oppressed. Raise up leaders who will govern with equity and serve the common good. Guide judges, lawmakers, and public officials to protect the rights of those who cannot advocate for themselves. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You deliver those in need from suffering and fear. Come to the aid of any who are exploited or abused, especially children, elders, and victims of human trafficking. Provide safety and help to our neighbors without shelter, re refugees, and those fleeing violence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You urge your people to welcome one another as you have welcomed us. Nurture ministries of hospitality and care in this and every congregation. We pray for people who are homebound, hospitalized, or separated from loved ones, especially those we name. Shirley, Shirley Mark, Mr. Mary. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died, trusting in your promises, and we give thanks for their faithful witness. Sustain us in hope until we are united with them in the joy of your eternal presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another.
morning's offering, we continue to thank you for your uh, continued generosity with United in Christ. Um, if you are donating, or if you're putting your offering in the plate physically, you can uh, mark your envelopes with either the capital campaign or just general offering. You can also um, donate online through Tithely. You can scan the QR code that's found in the bulletin or in the pew in the back of, um, there's a card in the back of the pew that you can scan and then also place in the offering plate. But at this time as we receive our offering, we just thank you for your continued generosity. Please rise. Let the vineyards be fruitful, Lord, and fill to the brim our cup of blessing. Gather a harvest from the seeds that were sown, that we may be fed. Thank you very much. Life. Gather the hopes and dreams of old. Thank you. Unite them with the prayers we offer grace our table with your presence and give us a foretaste of the feast to come let us pray eternal god you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground receive these simple gifts of bread wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice we ask this through your name, Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, have men are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim, therefore, the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's invitation. And thus all who are gathered here are welcomed at this table. We invite you to come forward in the center aisle, making two lines, to take a glass on your way forward, and then to receive the bread and receive the wine, and to return to our seats by the side aisles, placing our empty glasses in the trays as we go. Should you need or prefer, we do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available. Please just let us know as you come forward. But come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Please be seated. God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. This is the body of Christ given for you. And may you, no matter where you are gathered, know the blessings of Almighty God going with you this day and always. Amen. Sherry, this is the body of Christ given for you. Al, this is the body of Christ given for you. Layla, this is the body of Christ given for you. Alicia, this is the body of Christ given for you. Terry, this is the body of Christ given for you. Elwood, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jane, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mike, this is the body of Christ given for you. Teresa, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Trudy, this is the body of Christ given for you. 
Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Johnny, my guy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Joven, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Tally, this is the body of Christ given for you. Would you like some? That's all right. There you go. Excellent. Brian, this is the body of Christ given for you. Gabby, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jordan, Jordan, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Kathy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Ella. Ella, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Annette, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mike, this is the body of Christ given for you. Betsy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Gwen, this is the body of Christ given for you. John, this is the body of Christ given for you. Donna, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. Garrett, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Karen, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dave, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nancy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mel, this is the body of Christ given for you. Sir George, this is the body of Christ given for you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. given for you. And Emmy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Coda, this is the body of Christ given for you. Carol, this is the body of Christ given for you. Katie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Scarlet, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Sharon, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Would you like a grape juice? Sure. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Emmy, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Coda, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Carol, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. And Katie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Would you please rise in spirit or in body? May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raise, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your faithful with joy, with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven and earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, bring coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us with the grace of the Holy Spirit, bless you and remain with you now and forever. Amen. Let's join together in singing our sending hymn, O Lord, How Shall I Meet You, found on page 15 of your bulletins. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.